Hello and welcome to the RSG Podcast episode, Tony Stank. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's uh, another name for Mr. Tony Stark, because today we all three saw Captain America Civil War, which we have dubbed Captain Morgan's Civil Liquor War Cast. <laughs> Something. Yeah. Captain Morgan's Liquor yeah. of War. Yeah. Liquor of War, that's right. Yeah. So we're going to discuss mostly Captain America today. Uh, if you have not seen Civil War yet, I mean, it did come out on Thursday. You've had plenty of time. But uh, spoilers? Yeah, there's going to be spoilers. Yeah, yeah a lot we're going to spoil us. a lot. Yeah. So. yeah, there's going to be spoilers. Yeah, so you be warned now. I know that nobody listens to this anyway, but we're not going to see you bitching. What's that? Do like, like every other like YouTube movie review I listen to always has like the spoiler review and the non-spoiler review. We don't believe in that bullshit. No, because only spoiler reviews. Look, there, there's no FCC on us. We oh wait, let's you know let's give a non-spoiler review. It's good, go watch it. Okay, now okay. let's get to the yeah. spoiler review. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, jump right into it. So the scene opens up. <laughs> right. Well, the, the, the opening of the movie is interesting because it opens yeah. in 1991. Right. That's correct. And the first thought that I had was, I wonder how many people are coming to see this movie who were not alive in 1991. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's like the 70s. Yeah. That's the 70s, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's 70s for our generation. Oh, man. It's, it's even the early, it's like, like it's early 1965. I'd be like, that's forever ago. But your parents are like, well, no. And now we're those people that are like, it wasn't that long ago. No, it was, you know, 30 years. That was like 10 years ago, right? Yeah. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> yeah. No, not even close. <laughs> A little bit more than that. Yeah. I, uh, I remember the, the, the 90s pretty... With, with, I, I just, I remember them with a lot of... It's very vivid. It's yeah. very vivid. Yeah. Because it was not that long ago. No, it really wasn't. In the grand scheme of things. Yeah. But there are a lot of people. I mean, sixteen. They would be born two thousand nine years after that. Yeah. So like anyone twenty five or below, which is probably a significant portion of the audience, yeah. going to see Captain America: Civil War, was not born in nineteen ninety one. Yeah. Wow. I had no idea. Like apparently, I missed that. Did did the Winter Soldier? Yeah, we already missed that quote. Did the Winter Soldier really kill Tony's parents? Like in the comics. Did who what? Did the Winter Soldier really kill Tommy's parents? In the oh, comics. Oh, Tony's? Uh, Tony's? In the comics? No. Okay. Yeah, no. I didn't think so, but I was like, I like where they went with it. Yeah. Yeah, no, they, they wanted to bring the, the Civil War storyline around, and they did it in mostly the same way as far as, like, lots of, like, bad things have been happening to people because of super power people fighting mm -hmm. and you know they brought that full circle and then um, and then there were more personal reasons that they came into it for a lot of the characters so yeah, yeah. yeah. well I like that they made it a lot a lot more about a lot of the more personal reasons between the two you know what I yeah. Mean? yeah and that's what also kept it a Captain, more of a Captain America movie Unless of an Avengers movie, because let's be honest, all the Captain America movies are basically Avengers movies except for the first yeah, one. Yeah, they're, they're short. Winter Soldier is pretty close to being an Avengers movie itself. Yeah, pretty close. You know. So, um, but they keep they keep a Captain America movie by making it about the personal motivations of Captain America, and his Steve Rogers, and and how he wants to save his friend Bucky, who meant so much to him. You know what I mean? They have that. I mean, I and mean, that's one with Bond. Like, they, that was the guy who stood up for him when he couldn't do anything himself. You know what I mean? When he was the weak shrimp guy. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So, he's got that he got loyalty. Well, that, I mean, he sees that he's being dealt a shitty hand. Like, he knows. He's like, this, this isn't, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that one of my favorite things about this particular movie that... A lot of movies and um, even the comics do is that they don't sometimes fo uh, focus on the fallout of of the actions, and you got a lot of that. And there's yeah. a whole lot yeah. of like the fallout from Sokovia um, and what happened there. Um, part of the reason why I really liked again, you know, Stark's Tony Stark's you know take on the whole matter was like he was straight up told like by a parent, my son died because of you. Yeah. 
Is it bad that the first thing I thought of was, well, did he sign up with Hydra or did he sign up with uh, Shield? <laughs> right. Like, let's put some context on that. Like, was he really a bad person? Like, did he was he programming for Shield or for Hydra? Well, no. I mean, and that's so. that they bring that back around. Like, he looked into it, looks into who this kid was, and he was just there to make a difference. Yep. Just helping to like. Yeah. Is there a little? Build help, help build homes for homeless people. Yeah, that's all he was there for. And, yep. you know, that, was, that was my first thought when she was talking yeah. about his accomplishments and what he did. I was like, yeah, but I mean, they kind of know what they sign up for when they join Hydra. They're probably going to get shielded to the face. Yeah. <laughs> but he wasn't a Hydra agent or a shield agent. He was just a goodwill agent. Yeah. yeah. And um, he died because of it. So, and then they held him, Tony, directly responsible, which he was. Like... For all of it, yeah. 100%. hundred percent his fault. You know, mm-hmm. you you can't even argue, and he couldn't even argue that he was trying to like save the world, because the world was only in danger because again, Tony Stark done fucked up. Yep. yep. Well, that's what I love. They did Tony Stark so well, because he's such a flawed person. Yeah. And you see those flaws, in, in stark detail. Yeah. In this movie. You really do. You know, but at the same time, he's so charming and lovable that you don't hate him. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, oh, Tony. You're right. You know? One, well, he always means well. And that's yeah. like... Yeah. The only time that he was just being an irresponsible ass was in the first movie. Mm-hmm. You know? And then he realized he was being an irresponsible ass. Um, and then despite himself, he continued to be an ass. But at least at this point, you know, he could say he was trying. So, yeah. that's something, you know. Uh, the other very personal storyline uh, centered around uh, Black Panther, who. Which was, was done amazingly well. Fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. T'Challa was fucking amazing in this movie. Like, absolutely amazing. It was so well done. Yeah, it really was. And the accent and just the. Pure badassery that he like emanated was, was awesome. Yeah, he was a great character, and like you take a character who, I mean, he's, I mean he's well known in the Marvel universe, but only within the comic books and only amongst the fans. Yeah, you know he's, but even then he's only known as like oh yeah I know who of Black Panther, you know a yeah. lot of people don't know really the background or the history or the story behind him. And they did a, just an amazing job of like taking what would be a background sort of superhero and making him really awesome. Just making him a really well fleshed out character uh, on top of just being a badass superhero. Yeah. So. Well, Iron Man was a lot the same way. I mean, he was always a major part of the Avengers, but he was never that huge. I, he was bigger than Black Panther was. He was yeah. bigger than Black Panther, yes, but he wasn't as he wasn't as he wasn't Spider Man level, or no, uh-huh. you know what I mean? No, he was definitely not. He wasn't he wasn't Spider Man or even Captain America level, right? Like, or or the X Men level, but yeah. you know, as far as the actual comic books go. But I mean, he was pretty well known, and you know, if you talk to anybody about like big Marvel heroes, Iron Man was generally on that list. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, after like. X Men, the X Men, and the mutants there. Captain America, Hulk, yeah. Thor. You the know, rest of the Avengers. Yeah, I, I think you go directly to Iron Man after that point. But uh, I think T'Challa, Black Panther was was even less well known than yeah Iron Man was, like considerably less well known. Yeah. But I, his character was awesome. His suit was awesome. Like, oh, suit looked fantastic. He was the most centered character in the entire thing, too. Like, he he, he was clear about what he was there for. He mm-hmm. wanted to kill Bucky because Bucky killed his dad, or so he thought. But when he when he realized that, he was like, this is getting crazy. We're stopping this right now. Well, yeah, th- at the end, he realized that he was, he was acting completely out of vengeance, and he nearly killed the wrong person for it. Yeah. You know... Uh, and when that realization hit him is when he kind of like brought it back around and that was like that was there was a couple there's a couple characters who had like turning points which was really important to the the Civil War storyline the switching of sides yeah Um, you know you had that with Black Panther and you also had it with um, Black Widow Black Widow Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, which was Black Widow was a little less pronounced yeah I didn't really see that coming 
Yeah, me either, actually. I mean... I didn't either. I knew something was going to have to get, because I knew somebody's going to get to him before they got to the jet. And when it was her, I was like, what is she going to do against two super soldiers? And then it would then like, ding, you know, Don, I was like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, she knows she can't stop them in reality. Right. It was just them, but she could delay them long enough. True. For but, everybody else to get yeah, there. Which, know. how cool was Ant-Man? And it was awesome. Oh, oh, yeah. That's that's the thing that this movie did so well. And part of this is because of all the setup they've done. Yes. Like, make no mistake that the reason why they can have this ginormous cast of characters and give them all, like... They, they didn't all have, like, an amazing amount of screen time, but they all had adequate screen time. Mm-hmm. And that's only because they all have movies to back them up. Yeah. Yeah, because we know the, who these people are. Yeah, with already. the exception of Spider Man. Yeah. But I think Spider Man, they had they had Panther. enough in Black Panther. Well, Black Panther had a, a lot of screen time in this. Well, yeah, he did. Like, yeah. you, you understood him in right now. And I'm sure there's going to be a movie later on. Oh, yeah, or, it's on the docket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think 2018 is right. when it's on the docket for. Yeah. I mean, you, you understood who Black Panther was, and he had a, a decent amount of screen time. So you got his motivations for this movie, but you didn't really get his background too much. Yeah. Um, a lot of me honestly wonders, though, like how much of these sort of movies would I enjoy had I had no background in Marvel? Like, had I had no prior knowledge of who these people were, if it would be as enjoyable for me? Because, I mean, I knew of Black Panther. I knew who he was. I've read a couple of his comics. Um, well, a lot of his comics. And so, I mean, I already had a good idea of who he was. Right. But... If I didn't know who he was, would, would you care? Would, would, would this feel like yeah. he, they're just sort of like shoving in this movie? Like, and why? Well, they're, they're would that feel movies, that way to though. me? They, they are good standalone movies, too. Like, you can go watch Captain America and be entertained and have no prior knowledge of what it is. I mean, you can do the same with, you know, all these other movies, in my opinion. I mean, you don't have to have prior knowledge to really enjoy it. Yeah. I think there are a lot of people who don't know Black Panther who are going to like Black Panther after this movie. And they should as well. They should. Yeah, and I don't. And I don't think that your prior knowledge is what makes you enjoy Black Panther. This movie, I think he was really well done. He was well acted, and that his character just it just made sense. It clicked with people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because everyone has that like, you you don't understand what it's like. You know, everyone has that general understanding of like, if someone killed my dad in front of my eyes, I would want to do something about it. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? So I didn't, for sake his entire legacy of the Sokovia Accords and making everybody in governments control them and just go yeah. full on vengeance mode. Well, I mean, but the Black Panther was never in it for the Sokovia Accords. True. I mean, he was always in it for. Uh, he he was behind the Sokovia Accords because his father was, and then he was in it to specifically try and kill Bucky, mm-hmm. uh, and that all changed when he realized that Bucky wasn't the was bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Um, when that motivation was taken away, he switched sides fairly quickly. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't. I shouldn't say he switched sides because that's not really. Yeah, he just stopped trying to. Kill he Bucky. just stopped trying to kill Bucky. Yeah. I'm not sure if switching sides is the way to put it necessarily. No, he still was with. I mean, he was still. I mean, well, he had his own agenda. He was on Tony's side. Well, I think as king, as King T'Challa, he's yeah. got to be for the. True. Sokovia Court. True. That, right. Don't want to Again, just he believes him. it's the correct thing to do. But at the same time, I think as the Black Panther, he understands that he needs to be free to do yeah. what he needs to do sometimes. Yeah. You know? I mean, Wakanda's like a big part of the Sokovia Accords. So. Yeah. I liked the... Uh, Even though they're harboring, you know. One scene that I really liked is when Bucky tried to punch Spider-Man and the kid blocked it and was like, holy cow, you got a metal arm. Like... It would the shock in Bucky's face that somebody was actually able to stop his punch and had equal strength enough. It was like it was like finally Marvel Disney's moving into mutant territory where like people are just naturally well not really I mean, Spider Man's not really natural, but like I don't know, it just seemed, it seemed a little different. Well, it you seemed... you you just gotta look at the profiles of uh the physical profiles of like each like Bucky's he's a big dude. Yeah. He is broad as shit. In yeah. This yeah. Movie. Um, you know, and you got Captain America, who's also really big. And then, then you got Spider-Man, who <laughs> is... Like, oh, jeez. Right. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
But you know, and then you have Spider Man who's um, you know in shape, but he's not nearly as broad. He's still a teenager, and he yeah, still yeah. looks like a teenager who's just in fantastic shape. But he doesn't look like this big brawny dude. Yep. And he's just like one handed blocking Bucky's punch, <laughs> like you know. So that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, the like, spider totally suit looks fantastic. And like yeah. how he's able to climb walls and stuff like that when he's talking to him. Like, so is it like suction cup on your hands? Or, like what? <laughs> No, it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the, that's the thing. Like, every character in this has had some sort of, like... I, I'm not going to say background movie, but they've been in enough of the other movies or have been, like, we've given enough of that, with the exception of Black Panther, um, that nothing ever felt awkward. It only felt like the only characters you were really being introduced to was Black Panther. Yeah. Um, like, Well, because we all know who Spider-Man is. Right. Yeah, we, exactly. Like, he's yeah. had... A, we know who Spider... That's, they didn't bother with his origin story, and it's obvious that they're not going to bother with his orange sto- origin story with his movie, either. Yeah, which is um, awesome. Yeah. Like, they didn't, they're not going to bother with it. We don't need it. Everybody knows it. We've seen Aren't it. you don't need to introduce, introduce the fact that his... Well, his I want to know what happened name ben. Was it Ben? And that... And maybe maybe some bad guy... Maybe Electro's uncle name will be Ben also. And they'll have a best friends moment. So we will have to see that in the Spider-Man movie. Oh. Yeah, no, I don't know if that's going to be necessary. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm just saying, maybe they're going to have a best friend's moment. You watch they... Martha's so <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. Maybe going to have a best friend's moment, so they have to replay the, uh, replay the origin story again for the 900th time. Yeah, well, I mean, but we've, we've seen Spider-Man. We know Spider-Man's history, right. so him being put in here was not any kind oh, of surprise. He perfectly, though. Yeah. And he was a great, like... like like opposite side Ant Man, right? So on the other, on the other side, on the other team we bring in Ant Man, who's new, and nobody else has really seen him. What does yeah. he do? What's he? What's it? What are his power sets or whatever? And so he's a surprise. He's a wild card. You know, they bring in a wild yeah. card for both sides because everybody else knew everybody else pretty much. Yeah. You know, except for Black Panther too. But yeah, uh, everyone else knew everyone else, and then but Ant Man was a surprise. They did not know what was going on there. Yeah, so. Ant Man was surprised. The Spider Man was surprised. The secret yeah. weapons of each team. Yep. Sort of. Yeah, and uh, they let's let's talk about the so, so the movie basically the basic outline. Uh, they show up. They want to. They there's a fight in the beginning where they're fighting with crossbones. Yeah. Who sets off an explosion, kills a bunch of people, including some Wakandans. That prompts the governments of the world to get together after all these other events and say we gotta have superhero oversight on by the UN. And well, let's let's discuss. part of the team. Hold on, part of the team agrees. Let's let's sign the accords. Uh, part of the team's like, no, nah, bro, that's, I can't, no. And sometimes you need to do things that, you know, if we sign up for oversight, maybe we'll be, you know, maybe they'll send us to do things we shouldn't be doing because of their agendas, or maybe they'll send us, they won't let us do something we should do because of their agendas. We need to be free of that sort of thing. Then we, they fight about it. <laughs> Captain America goes rogue, tries to save Bucky, who looks like he tried to kill King Ch- T'Challa. Or not T'Challa, T'Chaka. T'Chaka, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then it ends, culminates in a very large battle at an airport where Captain America and Bucky steal the Quinjet, go to fight the big bad, where we find out there's no big bad, and that there will be no reconciliation between Iron Man and Captain America. Yeah. Yeah, they're, I think from here on out, they're going to be not on good terms. Yeah. It's not going to matter. Yeah, no, they're. Yeah. You know, they're just not going to be on good terms. Yeah. From here on out. Yeah. Crossbones got dealt dirty, man. Like, he was there, and then all of a sudden he just suicided, and he's gone. <sighs> he was a minor character in the first yeah. place. Like, a super minor villain. Yeah. But he had potential. He's one of those. Something. He's like the... He's, he's the... he's the villain they write in like when, when everyone's hung over from the last week. So he's from the last month's episode. <laughs> And they're like, we need, we need somebody to throw in for Captain America to punch in the face. Uh, who are we going to get? Oh, we'll just bring Crossbones back. He breaks out of jail again or whatever. <laughs> you know? He, and if he's gone, he's gone. Nobody, nobody's going to really well, miss he's the Crossbones. One that, they said someone was going to die. Yeah. Crossbones died. Because they didn't kill off. They didn't Rudy. kill off anyone else, it's true. So, I mean, could have just been a troll from the, the producers or whatever, but. Yeah. Did they say someone who was going to die? Was that something that was like... They set it up pretty surely that someone was going to die. I don't think they ever... I guess I don't know. I'll have to go back and look at some of the promotional material and see if they 
actually said someone was going to die or not. I think everyone believed someone was going to die. I know I did. Yeah. I was waiting for it to happen the whole time. I thought it was Rudy, but for sure. When he hit the ground, I was like... <sighs> yeah. But then I thought, well, the suit's probably going to be able to take most of that front, but that's still... That's a fall. <laughs> well, he <laughs> fucked that, up his spine and was yeah. paralyzed and all kinds of other yeah. issues. I mean, he didn't really, like... Survive without an injury, that's for certain. Yeah. You know? I, the only reason why I didn't think it was going to be Rhodey was because that was too well telegraphed in the previous. Yeah. Yeah. And Marvel's been pretty good about, like, not giving away too much in their previews. Yeah. Unlike other superhero movies. Batman vs. Superman. <laughs> I'm <laughs> saying, if this is Batman vs. Superman, we see Giant Man in the previews. Right. If yeah, we, see, we so see Giant Ant Man. They yeah. said this Giant Ant Man in the previews and be like, check out how awesome this is. Yeah. That was so cool though. Like I, when he was talking about it, he goes, "I've only done it once." And then I was out for like a, a day or so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The fight uh, was also really interesting. I think because you have these superheroes who are going at it, and going out with like a lot of force, but they're so like familiar with each other's like capabilities. Um, that they were pulling their punches. Like, you could tell that nobody yeah. was really trying to hurt anybody. And the only real injury that happens was because of accidental friendly fire. Yep. Because you know. somehow they yeah, were distracted. Not which I, I thought they did a really good job of playing the relationship between Scarlet Witch and Vision. Like, yeah. At least starting it off. Like, yeah, it was very subtle, but it was yeah. definitely there. Yeah. You know what I mean? They didn't, they didn't go hard at it. Like, no. OMG, Vision and Scarlet Witch are so in love. No, it was, it was, well, I'm really glad the way they approached this because, you know, you got a tiny, tiny inkling in, in Age of Ultron. Yeah. Um, you know, when Vision saves Goes back Wanda. and saves her, right. Goes back and saves Wanda, and you can, you know, you get a little inkling of it, and this, you, you just get more of, of like that, um, that progression of that story, but, it, you know, at a very slow pace. Yeah, you know, so it just feels very natural and very, very real, you know, and not just like overly. Especially since you have someone like Vision who has, like, who's still learning, right? <laughs> and yes, that's yes. still very obvious. He's incredibly intelligent, but he like that's the thing about the character that they did so well is like he is super smart. He sees and learns like human culture very easily, but he still has a very hard time. Like, he's very yeah. much data, you know, yeah. from yeah. like Star yeah. Trek. He really is. Yeah, he doesn't grasp the emotion, why emotion makes us do things a certain way or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, or like when he's like kind of trying to help, you know, want to feel better. Right. About herself, he's like, nobody dislikes you. And she's like, yeah. uh, thanks. Thanks. She's like, right. They just fear you because it's just an automatic reaction in the amygdala. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and she's like, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, it's a very interesting relationship, and I think that would be. It's, but speaking of Scarlet Witch, I think she was actually one of the biggest surprises in this movie for me. Because I thought she was going to be a sort of like relegated to side character to like take Hawkeye status in the first yeah. movie, right? right. Mm -hmm. Where she like shows up occasionally, does some cool stuff, but doesn't really do much else. But I thought that she had a much larger role than I thought she would have. Yeah. And that I thought I think Elizabeth Olsen did a much better job than I was giving her any credit. For yeah. going into this movie, she did amazing in this movie. Yeah, yeah like, she was really good as Scarlet Witch. Like in the in the in Age of Ultron, she did fine. Yeah, you know, but she really got a shine in this one. Yeah, and it, she did a really well, did a really good job, even despite the fact that she's related to an Olsen, the Olsen twins. So yeah, I mean, that's something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something. Yeah, she did a really good job. Cause I've, I've seen her a couple of movies where I was like, she's okay, she's okay, but I thought she was good. She in was. This movie. Absolutely, was I agree. Good. Was good. Yeah, you know, she did a really good job of portraying that emotion that that she would have. You know. Yeah, man, very interesting. Was, man, they destroyed that airport. Oh yeah, they did. That thing was shot. Like, I'm glad they got everybody out. Yeah. But it feels like it's going to be another one of the images on. This is why we should, you know. Yeah. Well, that's not even going to be. That's not going to be even discussed anymore. Like. Yeah. You know. The rest of the team is not the, the a lot of the team since you had two people who left the one side. Nobody else left the other side to the you know to go to to Tony's side. Yeah, Tony had two defectors you know over to Cap's side. So that's like a huge part of the team. 
He's still a Spider-Man for now. Kind of. I don't think... I don't know if... It, like, a Spider-Man came in at, for this fight as like kind of like backup, it seemed like. Um, but I, I didn't get the feeling that he was like officially part of the team yet. That's that, fair. I feel like that's going to be cemented more in his movie, perhaps. Yeah, and you guys admit, and I don't know if we already mentioned this or not, but like the character that they had for Spider Man in this was very true to the comics. He was always talking, but yeah. not in that annoying, I'm going to let the dump truck destroy 50 more blocks yeah. of, of cars before I do or act or anything. Like he was legitimately very, he was a kid. I mean, yeah, he was, he was, yeah. He was really good. He like, was a hero worshiping team. Yep. Yeah. You know, who was like, holy shit, I'm fighting Captain America. Holy crap. Yeah, right. This dude has a metal arm. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> and that's the best part. Like, what, what the last Spider Man, okay, one of the mini sins of the last Spider Man movie was that they went, they tried to make him like more like a Deadpool character where he was yeah. like smart mouthing back all the time and like yeah. being trying to be real witty and stuff like that. Um, and that just doesn't come across very well in, in a live setting, you right. know. Uh, and so they, what they did is they took that like idea that Spider-Man talks a lot, captured it really well with the type of character that Spider-Man was without going overboard because he's not, he's not talking crap all the time. You right. know, he's like just talking because he's nervous and this is how he deals with it. Yeah. You know, and it was really well done. It's really, really. It actually makes me very excited to see the Spider-Man movie. This was the best Peter Parker to date. Yeah, like for sure. And he was only in the movie for like he maybe had a, to- a grand total of like eight to ten minutes of screen time, you know, at the most. Yeah, that's probably accurate. Yeah. Yeah. And I like how it was still pre-Spider-Man. Like he was still wearing sweatpants. Yeah. Like that was cool. Yep. It is kind of funny that. They've made it so that Tony Stark is the one that created the Spider-Man suit and stuff like that, and like built on the technology and things like that. I mean, it was it was cool. Yeah, I just feel like Tony's kind of the go-to guy for cool suits now. Like he outfitted <laughs> the Avengers and everybody, and so yep. you know, and unless you're on Team Cap, then you're going to Wakanda. True. And getting the good, good shit. The vibranium shit. Yeah, because it looks like the. The helicopter just rolls up and is just shooting Black Panther, and he's just staring at it. Yeah, <laughs> like that was funny. what? Why? Why are you even bother with that? And what, I mean, Black Panther's his costume was ba. God, it was cool. Yeah, that looked really awesome. It, yeah. it was cool. I just remember, and you know, you know, and I'm gonna uh, socially speaking, I think Black Panther has an amazing impact as well. Like up to now, you know, we had. Falcon, who, by the way, was awesome in this. Yeah. yeah. Like, they they took somebody who was pretty unimpressive yeah. and made him pretty awesome. Yeah. So, props to that. But you, you had Falcon, who was kind of just like a sidekick to a Captain America. Right. You Captain know, America's Captain America. Yeah. And that's like, mm. and then you get Black Panther, who's like a serious fucking, like, black superhero. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, just. We also had Rhodey, who's. Iron Man sidekick. Iron Man sidekick. Right. Well, and he, he hasn't had his own movie. He's been in Iron Man movies. Yeah. Falcon has been in Captain America movies. You know, but Black Panther's going to have his own movie. He had a huge role in this. He was an unmitigated badass. He had an awesome costume. I had my my nephews there, um, who are of mixed parentage, heritage, um, half black, half white. And, you know, they both immediately just told me like Black Panther was their favorite and I was really happy that they had somebody that they could look up to somebody that they could like yeah. relate to as a superhero it was actually a really good feeling yeah. and uh, you know and that's on top of the fact that I already thought he was awesome you know so it worked out real well I think it was yeah. pretty awesome pretty awesome really I just I don't know you think we're ever going to get a Falcon or a Rhodey movie no War Machine movie mm-hmm. nope yeah, I don't think so either. It's probably never going to happen. Yeah. I mean, Falcon was awesome in this movie, don't get me wrong. But uh, he's just... What could he possibly do by himself with that, like, big cap in? He's racist, yo. No, 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 I'm not talking like that. <laughs> no, I, know, I know, I know, I know what you mean. Yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's like... Uh, to but me, everybody is the, the perfect support of their character. Story. Well, I understand that, but this guy's... He's the got his own life, his own things. Look, we could talk about, like... I, who knows? Maybe he's got a baby mama who's got giving him trouble. I don't know. Maybe he's got. Why is he gonna have a baby? Maybe he's mama? got. Maybe he's, he's got black? two kids or whatever. Like I, who knows? Like right. 
I mean, Clint had kids and a wife. Yeah, but we didn't even but we're know. Not, we're not getting a Hawkeye movie. <laughs> we aren't getting a Hawkeye movie either. And are you so. okay with that? Yeah. See, I'm that same way. With well, who cares about getting? I'm like, who cares about getting a Falcon movie too? Like, I, I agree. I don't think yeah. that. I don't think he as a character has enough going on to support himself. He is a supporting character. Right. He's and he is a am- he's a really good supporting character. He is a really yeah. good supporting and, character. And like they really sub- cemented that he was an excellent supporting character with this movie cuz in in uh Winter Soldier, he was an okay supporting character. Yeah, he, a lot of you're just like, "Okay." I don't think they really knew what to do with him in Winter Soldier. Yeah, it didn't yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, like, well, he, he was fly. still figuring out what he could do in Winter Soldier too. True. You know what I mean? Although they basically introduced him there, they made the Falcon in Winter Soldier. So. And I loved how they. I think what made him such a good supporting character though is that his wings were not just for flying. Like he could yeah. pull them off, and he had a shield. You know, he had that like he had versatility. I guess. And yeah. Yeah, he was above and beyond just right. Just and then they gave him his thrust power glider. <laughs> don't thank me. Thank the thank the Falcon. Thank yes. the Red Wing. Yeah, the Red Wing. Yeah, I was made by a drone and not like an actual bird. Yeah, she's yes. like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna thank that thing. <laughs> but, it's like, go um, ahead and pet it. It's cute. I hear that they are gonna do a uh, Black Widow movie though. There's there's still talks about doing a Black Widow movie. I heard it was nailed down. That's not what I've read. So when did you read it? The, earlier this week. That's what I heard about it too. So I don't know. Yeah, I heard, I heard they, it was that they that they definitely want to do one, but not that anything had been actually put down for sure. As, I mean, they have movies scheduled out through twenty thirty four. Okay, like they have a they have the big board at, at Marvel Disney, and they have move they have plans all the way out through twenty thirty four. Right. But nobody knows any. But they also just recently moved the Inhumans off the slate from two thousand nineteen. So out of they moved in humans out of phase three, so they got phase three nailed down to where they want it. But what phase four is going to bring? Who knows? And if we continue calling them phases with ever progressively large numbers, I don't know. Is like a Marvel take over the world plan or what? I don't I don't know. You know? I feel like I feel like Wooda deserves their own flick. I feel like she does too. I feel like you can do a lot of like. Like we already know a lot of her origin, mm-hmm. but I feel like you could do you could address a lot of her origin yeah. in a standalone movie without directly telling her origin story. You could you could address portions of it that are important to say for the character. Yeah, yeah. And I think like she absolutely absolutely because she's been the longest standing supporting character and the best supporting character for all of the yeah. Iron Man flicks. Yeah, you know, she's since a, they got rid of Coulson. She's badass too. Like. Yeah. You, oh, get yeah. the, you get the feeling, because most of the time, and this is going to sound terrible, but it is what it is. Like, whenever I see women in that sort of role, with a, like actresses in that role where they're punching and fighting and kicking and stuff, like, you can tell it's choreographed bullshit. Right. But in this one, like, you really got the, the feeling that she was really hitting She was people. whooping these dudes' yeah. asses. Yeah. And, like, she was really just beating just, the fuck out of them. Yeah, she's yeah. tearing ass, and you're, you're sitting there going, okay. I mean, the, yeah. yeah. Speaking yeah. of, someone else who was like, Kind of awesome uh, was the uh, Agent Carter 2.0. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Like yeah. she was doing some pretty cool shit in this as well. Yes, I mean she kind of got handled. House. Yeah, but well, she, got, a, she did the regular person. The regular yeah, person. She get hide, handled by somebody who's a you know wearing a vibranium right. suit or whatever. Yeah. Was it? Wait, was it Panther? I think it was no, Panther. It was, it was, was it? They were fighting. It was Winter Soldier yeah. mode, Bucky. Yeah. yeah, 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 that's what it was. Handler. The fact that she was able to survive Winter Soldier mode. Right. <laughs> uh, well, and to her credit, like, she was Scarlet in. Witch, or Scarlet Witch, uh, Black Widow came right after her right. and, and got the same damn treatment. She got yeah. the same like, treatment, right. You know, and yeah. so did, like, a lot of people <laughs> yeah. during Winter Soldier mode, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, when he got Winter Soldier mode turned on, it was, it was over. It was a different story. Yeah. Was a different story. Then. And I think that's only really a different story because he's just more brutal, more ruthless. Yeah, yeah. he's not pulling. Yeah. yeah, he's not pulling any punches. You know, in that mode, yeah. so to speak. Um, yeah, not. I'm interested to see what they do with her in the future because it's not done for her. I don't think. No. Uh, she's gonna no, no. be more. She'll be back. Yeah, she'll be back. I, you know, I would love to see actually a like while she's because she, my feeling about Widow because they leave it sort of unresolved at the end. My thing about her is that she's gone rogue, right? Yeah. She, yeah, she's she's going to do what she thinks she needs to do. I don't think she's Team Cap now, necessarily. 
but she's, she's definitely survival. not Team Iron Man anymore either. Yeah, yeah. So she she's sort of rogue. She's sort of in the wind. And I would love to see an, an in the wind Black Widow movie doing what she thinks she needs to do to solve problems or see her showing up randomly in the other movies. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like where she she saw this going down or whatever and she she comes in with some intel or whatever to, to, to help solve a problem somewhere. You know what I mean? Like put her in Doctor Strange. Where she just shows up, do it, yeah, and That'd like, and like, yeah. you know, I found this stuff out or whatever. I know, you know, I came to investigate what's going on here because I feel like it's still my job to do that. You know, do you think Strange will be the bad Marvel movie? <sighs> Maybe. And for clarity, we were discussing earlier that a bad Marvel movie has to happen at some point. My reply to that is, it doesn't have to. It's already happened with some of the other Marvel, yes. in quotation, movies. Beyond the semantics of have to versus probably will or whatever, yeah. Nothing has to happen, right? I'm only quoting what you said. Yes. <laughs> but what I, the gist of what I'm saying, beyond the semantics of what I said had to, you know, the gist of what I'm saying is that odds are... They're going to make a stinker at some point. Just, just, you know, if you snap your fingers enough times in the row, you're going to fuck it up. Yeah. You know? And so, odds are at some point, one of them's going to come along and not be good. All right. All I know is in 2034, I want the entire fucking collection. <sighs> yes. I want it all. I do Fair too. Enough. I want to have just a shelf dedicated, and I want it to have all images of everything all into one comic book image across the backs of all the. Oh, DVDs. that would be it. that would be way badass. Yeah, but Nippon impossible to do, but super awesome. <laughs> Why is that? Well, you'd have okay. Even if you had how many movies are we talking about, right? Like maybe a lot. Like three year for the next eighteen years. Right. Are you talking about one picture for every single movie? No, I'm talking about like, like the whole thing shelf, goes up and have one. It has one like, do you, image. Like, like what, what, what image do you want on there, though? I mean, even if it's just like a superhero type pose or a comic book pose of all the characters, like not have to be stacked on each other, but just like you know, in perspective things. Yeah. Like you could take the Captain America movies and and put all the images of Captain America on them based on how many they have, you know. Right. And then so there you got that. If they do make a Black Widow movie, I mean, you could cement her into some other. I mean. The weird thing is that, like, you gotta imagine, like, you know, we're talking about, like, just under 20 years in the future, right? For movies. 20 years is a lot of years. Mm-hmm. We're talking about entirely new people, entirely new casts, oh, yeah. entirely new, like, probably new superheroes, right? I mean... Yeah, someone have to start doing, like, they have to start digging for more, and they have to start doing it pretty soon, really. Yeah. You know? Because if they do an Iron Man 4, which I think... I love Iron Man. I love I love Robert Downey Jr. as, as Tony Stark Do they need as a much as everyone else. I think it's cleaner if we just leave it in trilogies. If Iron Man wants to come back and do another in more Avengers movies in the future, or as like a, someone calls up Tony Stark and asks for help in the future, I'm for that. But I'm not for an Iron Man four. I just Let's think you, move along. I think you just like prime numbers, and that's disgusting. And move to something else. <laughs> Uh, there's nothing disgusting about prime numbers. They're beautiful. <laughs> yeah, but was Iron Man three really? Any, I mean, it was good, but it wasn't like. No, it wasn't. It wasn't that great. Like, I don't know. It was. I didn't think it was. Do we need a four? four? I don't think we need a four. I don't think we need a four either. I don't. I, I'll I don't watch it. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like. I'm like. Well, if they want to make a four, I will absolutely watch it. But I'm not yeah. like. Ooh, I want to see another Iron Man movie. Yeah. I mean, I don't think my opinion counts for much, but. I would rather not see another Iron Man movie. Let's put somebody else in. You know, let's let's move this land along and keep it fresh and new. Yeah, let's I think I some... think I think instead of making another Iron Man movie, it'd probably be be better to have Tony Stark just show up in other superhero movies as Tony right. Stark as you Iron know? Man. Well, like what they're doing with Homecoming. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just have him show up in Spider Man or whatever and help out. You know, hell, even have him show up in Guardians of the Galaxy sometime. You know That'd what I mean? Be interesting. Just anything, but but let's start to move out because uh, let's move out, get new people involved, everything. Yeah, I mean, pretty soon they're gonna have to, like. Yeah. 
some like twenty years from now, some of these actors are just not going to be able to like. Well, and Robert Downey Jr. is not. He's going to be like pushing seventy at this point. Yeah, you know? and, and and they're going to get old and stale, and they're going to start making bad movies. But you know, I mean, even even like Chris Evans is going to be in his fifties. You know. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, you can only bulk up to Captain America's size so many times before your body's just going to be like, no. You can just that. stay there. <sighs> I, I like reading their diet and exercise plans for these superhero bodies and stuff like that. And you're just like, God, it's a full time job just maintaining your muscle mass. Yeah, you're getting paid a lot of money to do it, though. True. Yep. That is true. Yeah, yeah, I mean, at some point, you got. I mean, look at Hugh Jackman. Right? I mean, I hate to reference Wolverine, but the man's already, <laughs> the man's already in his 50s, right? Yeah. yeah. And he's got to bulk up to Wolverine movie style every single time they do a movie. And he's going to be in Apocalypse. Yeah. So he's going to have to be Wolverine. So, like, could you imagine being in your 50s and, and you get that note where it's like, hey, we're going to pay you this amount of money, but you have to be XYZ size weight. That's why he's done doing it. Well, right, right. I mean, he's done doing it now because he's like, I can't do it. I can't, I can't right. get that body anymore. Yeah, it's yeah. like... Too hard on them. They're yeah. gonna, like you said, that the message plays into. They're gonna have to bring new people, and they're gonna have to like refresh the crop. Right. Yeah. I mean, I know everybody's got their favorites now, but we gotta cycle in some new new blood, you know. And to, so on that note, really good at CG. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Who would yeah, like to see them cycle start. in? Um, like whoever's not on the slate already, right? Because let's see, uh, finishing out the slate. Of movies they have for Phase Three, we're gonna bring in Doctor Strange, we're gonna bring in a Wasp, because they have an Ant Man or a Wasp sequel coming up. Right. Doctor Strange is coming in. Um, Do you think in that period of time that like they're gonna introduce a bunch of new Guardians? When Apocalypse fails, they right as a movie, yeah. right and. Do you think that uh, Disney will be able to wrestle back the rights to, to, to the mutants from Fox? I don't know if that bridge can be fixed, man. Why? Well, Disney Marvel has gone... They've gone nuclear. Like, they are writing out mutants out of their comic book universe. Right. They are... The key here is comic book universe. Comic yeah. book... Yeah, I understand. I understand. Do you know how many times they've retconned the entire fucking universe? It's... Many times. Okay. Many times. All right. Many times. Yes, I understand that. It can absolutely be fixed. I it's, guarantee if they get the rights to it within the next five years, they get the rights back, they will fix that shit, and they will make money off of it. All right, that's Would you guys see another X-Men origin story? Like, would you see it? If well, Marvel see, here's the thing did. about X-Men origin stories is that there's always a different X-Team. Yeah. Coming okay, up. fair. Right. So what if they don't get to wrestle that away, but they get, like... Deadpool and Apocalypse and stuff like that. Or Deadpool and, and, and what you would call it. Like, do you think that would be a good fit in the Disney universe? No, I don't think Deadpool's Deadpool... Deadpool's a horrible fit. A horrible fit. Disney universe. I, think I like Dead... Deadpool where's that, actually. Yeah, leave Deadpool where is that. Yeah. But that means and... we're not getting Colossus. We're never going to get Colossus in the Marvel universe. Exactly. We're not getting Colossus for the same reason we're not getting any of the other X-Men. I would like to see Marvel Disney take over the X-Men, and if they have to absolutely do another Wolverine series, I want it to be versus Omega Red. It'd be fun. I want to see Wolverine and Omega Red go at it. I'd watch that. Yeah, and I want to see it done by Marvel Disney, because like, you know it's going to be good. Or you I'm, hope. I'm also super burned out on Wolverine. I am too, but that's why I said like if they absolutely I had to do it. I am super burned out on shitty Wolverine. Okay, I, I'm not con- okay. I'm burned out enough that I'm not convinced they can do a good Wolverine in a movie. That's because they've just proven that they can they can do it bad so easily. Yeah, I think and still make money, so they don't have to do it good. I think There's no they, consequences for them doing it poorly. I watched the first X Men movie; it was fucking terrible. Yeah, like, and I thought I knew it the first when I watched. It, I was like, "This is terrible. This is." fucking terrible like they screwed up Wolverine he was done terribly like everything about it was terrible but it made comic movies palatable enough to the general audience that it opened the doors up for what we got nah, today somewhat nah that was the 1983 Captain America did that <laughs> the 1990 Captain America you mean 19, was it 1990 it's 1990 was it it wasn't the 80s it was 1990 where he threw his shield through Red Skull. Yep. Okay. That was 1990. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <It was 90. laughs> All right. 
Yeah. I don't know. I would like to see a different Wolverine, though. Like, not the lumberjack Wolverine that we've got now. I would like to see more of, you know, Wolverine and his martial arts prime and stuff like that. Like, Disney's already proven that they can grab no-name actors and make them do really well in films. I mean, they did that with some of the Star Wars people. No one ever heard some of those people, and they're doing really good. So, I mean... Complete recast, complete re- storytelling. I mean, if they they could. So, what story, what Wolverine story, do you want to see? Oh, do you, well, I already said the Omega Red. I mean, like right, him fighting Omega Red. Um, like the, but how are they getting him there? That's true. And why? And why, how are they setting up the? They're going to have to do Wolverine fight. What are you saying? I mean, how are they setting it up? Like, <sighs> other than like Wolverine's Omega Red's the big baddie who's going to kill everything. They could even do it kind of like what they did with Whiplash. I mean, like, they what, just, like Weapon X project. They like could do. Like I mean, we've Weapon seen X that series. kind of, but well, we saw him get made. We didn't see him actually in the Weapon X program, though. I'd love to see the the like the I'd love to see a Wolverine movie where he goes rogue, and they send the Canadian super team, the Canadian Avengers. You know yeah, what I'm talking about? I do. Uh, what are they, I don't know what they're called. Puck. Yeah. And I had, I, what is the name? Uh, the Alpha? No. Alpha, so, yes. Uh, Alpha Force? Yeah. Something like that? Something like that. I, and that's exactly what I was thinking. When you yeah. said that, that's exactly, I was thinking that. Exactly they bring, time. and those people try and chase down Wolverine. Where Wolverine's kind of the bad guy? Where, where, where things are clear. Things are clear. Right. Like, he's gone, ro- he's gone, he's gone crazy. And gone feral and whatever. And they're trying to like, hunt him down and chase him down or whatever and bring him back in. And so it's sort of like, is he in the right for like trying to be escape and be free? Are they in the right for trying to bring in this crazy that guy who doesn't know what's going do on? A, or a Wolverine movie, as well as introduce like the Canadian Avengers. Yeah. If they wanted to bring more it, blood into as it. As far as like what they could do with Wolverine, they could do anything that they've done with Wolverine in the past, just better. Yeah. Like, because they tried to do the old man Logan. Alpha Flight. Alpha Flight. That's what I, I knew. It was Alpha something. Yeah. But. You know, they could do an Old Man Logan story. I would like to watch an Old Man Logan My understanding story. is that Old Man Logan is what the next movie is going to be. Oh, really? Yeah. So they're going to fuck that his up, His last Hugh Jackman movie will be to disgrace Old Man Logan. It will be his last act as the Wolverine. <sighs> that is such a disappointment. Ew. Uh, you know who else I would love to see? It's a Excalibur. Excalibur. <laughs> yeah, I know it. I, I knew love it. to see Excalibur. Me too. Me too. Excalibur, like, there's, and there's people specifically I want to see in Excalibur. Like, obviously, you have to have Captain Britain. You gotta have Captain Britain. Um, you, you gotta have, have, you have, to have the leader. What's your name? Uh, I would like to see Shadowcat. Shadowcat? She was in Excalibur. Yes. I, uh, Nightcrawler? Yep. Uh, they're gonna hard press to get him. Yeah. Now, I'm gonna get Nightcrawler or Shadowcat. Or Shadowcat either. <laughs> but. I would like to see magic. Yes. I would like to see magic. Yeah. I think magic well, would be a very cool character. I think you're gonna get to see. Yeah. Didn't didn't she's supposed to be in something, right? Yeah. There is a um, New Mutants. Oh yeah, New Mutants. Okay. TV show coming out soon. Hold on. I can use my phone here for a minute. Cannonball gonna be part of that? Yes. Interesting. They, let me let me find the list of who will be in the new mutants in the show. Because Macy Arya Stark. She's playing the feral chick. Yeah, she's yeah. going to be Ronnie, the feral chick. Yeah. In it. Um, it's so weird to see her go from Sansa Stark into an X Men movie. Well, yeah, well, Macy's doing another one. Like, Macy Williams is going to be one of the Starks. Children's gonna be in the X Men movie, and then you got yeah. Sansa well, Stark. Is. Sansa's, in the, Sansa's in Apocalypse. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Arya's gonna be in the new in a New Mutants TV show. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna have magic, cannonball. Hold on, let me find this article. Cool. Dude, I hope they do it well, cause like, cannonball's gonna take a lot of effects. So yeah. magic, for that matter, that could be really bad. That could be really um, bad. Sunspot. Okay. Was also going to be there Wolfsbane, which is the feral chick. Yeah, Rain. Uh, yeah, Rain Sinclair. Um, and Mirage. Okay. Yeah. Well, like, I guess... I don't know. Is this going to be a Fox show? What is this? I am not sure. It has to be, right? Yeah. <laughs> it might be CW. Oh, also... 
uh, Alcantara's ship as Storm is supposed to be there, too. Oh, uh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. So they're going to tie it into their... Apocalypse franchise. Yeah, to their to the X-Men cinematic franchise. That movie's going to bomb so bad. Well. It's not going to It's not going to bomb. It's going to make money, but it's going to be bad. They're going to make a ton of money. I mean, truth be told, the, the, the cardboard cutout they had at the theater for that looked cool. Yeah. Except for Angel, who still looks like a douchebag. He was always a douchebag. I never had any use for that guy. Yeah, but he didn't always look like a douchebag. Fair enough. I mean, when he was just Angel, he looked like a giant douchebag. Yeah. But Archangel was cool. Look. Yeah. Yeah. This Archangel looks stupid. It'd be nice to see a good Fantastic Four. I mean, I know we've talked about that before, but... Well, that's what I think will happen. I don't think that's going to be the next move as part of Phase 4, is that... Fox will give up the rights to Fantastic Four in some sort of deal, or they'll strike some sort of deal like they did with Sony for Spider-Man. I thought Fantastic Four was Sony. It's the other way around. It's Fox. Okay. Yeah, Fox also owns Fantastic Four and the X-Men. But the, they'll strike some sort of deal like they have with Sony where like they they have creative control, but they split the cash and, and with Fox. And you'll get the Fantastic Four back in the MCU. Which opens up a lot of doors to do a lot of yeah, things. Yeah, they can bring Doom in, the whole thing of Doom. Yeah, well, you can bring Doom in, you can set up, like, Galactus. Silver Surfer. Silver Surfer. Like Although they're like, going to have to get the right sim because he's got a yeah, movie, too. Right? Silver Surfer has always looked cool, but as a character, he's pretty boring. <laughs> yeah. Well, he could be a supporting character for Galactus, like, in that. Because, I mean, he's just the herald of Galactus. I mean, that's yeah. What he is, right? so, yeah. He's just kind of a. Meh. He's yeah. always been a boring sort of character. Well. <sighs> At the end of Infinity War, we're going to defeat Thanos, right? Uh, yeah. that, that's how Infinity War is going to go. Assuming so. <laughs> it's, and it's, but it's not going to be as crazy as the comic so, books. There's no, no way they can it make can't it that be. crazy. No. So, mm-hmm. I think you have to set up a f- new villain, a new big villain, to build towards, right? Yeah. And so, who are you going to get? Ghostbusters? <laughs> They're an excellent choice, I think. Um... But, I mean, Galactus makes sense. Right? Galactus mm-hmm. makes sense as a, as a new big bad to, like, sort of build towards, right? Um, and there's a lot of other people, like Kang. Kang. Well, there's a bunch of alien races you could choose from. The Brood. Oh, the Brood would be cool, but that that's like lawsuits from the aliens people. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty much asking for lawsuits from the aliens people. Um, Which is all, well... And that's a Fox, Fox. thing anyway, yeah. so... Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, they already have, like, the Kree, right? So you could do more of a Kree, like, Empire thing. Yeah. We could bring yeah, in some more Kree stuff. Yeah, but they're decimating the Kree, though. Like, how many thousands of Kree have been killed in the various movies here? So, I mean, they're not really that big of a threat, in my opinion. Not that many Kree. The Kree are a galactic, like, species. Like, they have, they have hundreds of planets. True. No, I'm not saying there's any shortage of, like, people. Right. We've, we've only just... killed Ronan. Well, no, I mean... They're, the Kree are the group that invaded when Loki brought him to New York, right? So you no, have, no. Who were they? Who was no. that? What was that? It was not the Kree. Those are not the Kree. No. They look like the Kree. No. <laughs> they look like else. paper people. So. Yeah. Ronan was Kree. So he was. So the, what about the that, soldiers? Oh, so the, he had more of Thanos' like minions fighting for him. Yeah. Though. Yeah, he had minions. Okay, so that's where there's like the. I call them paper people because they look like you could just go. Yeah, just blow them up. But. Yeah, that wasn't the Kree. They're, I can't remember what they were called now, but it was not the Kree. Um, if you watched any of like Marvel's Agents of Shield, they have a dead Kree that they're doing experiments on. Um, I haven't really watched much Agents of Shield. The scroll. This is true. We could do a scroll. I would say the Shitar Empire, but that's like actually, I would, I would love to see like a Secret Wars with the scroll. Sort of thing. I think Secret Wars is what you have to culminate the whole damn thing into. Like, it, but that's gonna be hard to do. Cause yeah, like, but will you just slowly in Phase Four have the people like, s- like start acting shady, right? Right. And then and then find out at the culmination of Phase Four, like that they they've been replaced by fucking scrolls. Scrolls. You know. Yeah. 
That'd be interesting. Yeah. A Secret Wars would be pretty sweet, though. That's that's a little bit too big, maybe. I don't know. We'll see how they do how we do with the Infinity Wars. I think the Infinity Wars is going to be a real test for some people. Yeah. Like, because the scope they've already like shown that they can do big cosmic characters. Now, the Infinity Wars is going to. I think it'll have some of those, but it's not going to be as crazy as the comic books, where you have like literally the universe. Yeah. The guy's name the universe. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and and fucking. That's true. Uh, love and hate and all these other like cosmic beings yeah. Epoch and you know, Captain Marvel well they are doing a Captain Marvel movie yeah um, coming out of nowhere and just doing all these crazy Quasar and, well, and Captain Marvel's Cree Cree creation yeah, yeah. Cree or Skrull I can't remember which one it's Cree so what if they like or, I'm sorry I'm jumping back to if Disney gets the rights to the X-Men stuff like that what would, it'd be fun to see them do like a good Phoenix movie, or like good setup. A, a good, good one, a good Phoenix yeah. saga. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I would agree with that. A good because, Phoenix saga. I mean, you could go into the universe with. I would. Phoenix and, I think I would rather that, see a good like Madeline Pryor, like Hellfire. Um, I'd see a good Hellfire Club. Yeah, a good Hellfire Club. Um, or like the, uh, I'm interested to see too, like the Illuminati. Mm, yeah. You know. Uh, Namor would be interesting. No, he wouldn't. He could be. Namor was pretty much he was pretty much a badass, but yeah. he looks stupid. Er, man. <laughs> they could change how he looks. <laughs> they could fix it. They could just send him over to Stark Industries and get him suited up with a cool suit. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. Since he's handing those things out now, like I could probably go get one. <laughs> Oh yeah. man! Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Like, there's just a lot of stuff. There's, I mean, Doctor Strange opens up a whole new realm of like yeah. potential like bad guys, mystical, and, magical. Yeah, like Dormammu things, and yeah. fucking Blackheart and Mephisto and. But if they do that, then they're going to have to do the Ghost Rider. No, they don't. They don't have to do Ghost Rider, but I'd love to see them bring Ghost Rider back into the fold, like a supporting character. I would love to see that as well. I wouldn't mind seeing a good Ghost Rider movie. That wouldn't. That wouldn't. What like, about even because. Like, you said Daredevil and Ghost Rider do stuff together too sometimes, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So like, well, that's what I'd love to see in the future. Just bring it into the to the Netflix universe. Yeah, bring him into that, or or bring the Netflix universe into the cinematic universe, and I'd love to see like, give me some team up movies, you know? Yeah. Just Spider Man call Doctor Strange and the two of them go and solve a uh, solve some shit. Get a Spider Man, yeah. Doctor Strange buddy cop movie. Yeah. That would actually be kind of fun. You know, get a Captain America and, you know, Ant-Man USA together, <laughs> solve some shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wonder if they're going to do a US agent ever. Maybe. Because US agent shows up only when, when the people who are in charge of Marvel Comics disapprove of what the US government's doing. Or they want to say <laughs> they want to say that they disapprove of something. Because, like, recently US agent showed back up again in the comics during the Bush era... Oh, really? Around the whole, like, uh, like uh, phone tapping thing and all that kind of stuff, USA just showed up again. And Captain America went dormant, and USA just showed up so we could be like, the U.S. government's kind of a dick, guys. Because the and U.S. Now, agent was kind of a dick. And now U.S. agent's around to be, to be the representation of how the U.S. government's kind of a dick right now. So, hmm. I don't know if we'll see U.S. agent in the cinematic universe or not, but it would be interesting. I would, I would like to see some some of the like the uh, I would like to see Blackheart personally I think Blackheart would be awesome a Blackheart or Dormammu either one would be fantastic yeah as a villain I just think Blackheart just looks fucking cool as shit yeah, yeah. they could do a lot with him too um bring the Ghost Rider back yeah to the fold make him good make him not played by Nicolas Cage right like anyone else. <laughs> right. <laughs> Literally anyone else. That reminds me of seeing the uh, Nicolas Cage uh, suit testing videos when he was supposed to be yeah. Superman. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that would have been the tiniest Superman ever. <laughs> but, yeah. I don't know. I mean, if they brought the mutants back in, right, you can obviously put Professor X mixing in with anybody, pretty much. Of course, I guess... What I would like to see is just the Sentinel. Um, what do they call it? Kind of what they started to do a little bit now with the Sentinels and the set when first class or was it? Uh, 
<sighs> In Days of Future Past? Yeah, yeah. Like, but I, more played out, like, the entire fall of everything, I think, would be, like, the cool. If they can get the rights to all that, just do that and be done with it. So. If they got the X-Men back, what do you think the first, like, major storyline they should do is? Killing Wolverine. Hmm. For real. Yeah. Whatever, that's not a storyline. I heard that shit. That um, just happened somewhere in the movie. I know. Uh, you know, I don't know. It depends on how much time you got for setup. Like, how much can we invest for setup, right? Right. Because personally, I'd love to see Executioner Saw. Okay. Or Extinction Agenda. Okay. Either one. I want to see. Both are going to require setup. I want to see one or two, either House of M. All right. Or Onslaught. Yeah, I think you can't go. I think you can't go Onslaught first thing. Sure, why not? So on slide. All right, I suppose you can, but why couldn't you go on slide? Because he ends a lot of people. Yeah. Ends out the universe pretty quick, is all I'm saying. Also, doesn't end, not as fast as the House of M. House of M kills off all the fucking mutants, like yeah. all of them. Yeah. But um, apparently, be boarded. <laughs> <laughs> My cat is jumping, getting ready to jump on Roby. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, that's why I wanted to see, like, Extinction Agenda or uh, Excalibur Song first. Or, not Excalibur Song. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Executioner Song. Executioner Song. So I think Executioner Song would be a good one, because then you introduce... Because you can tie in Deadpool and Cable. You can bring Cable into the Deadpool universe, and you can tie in Deadpool as well. Even though he didn't... Even though he wasn't part of Executioner Song in the comic books. But... And you can sort of, like... Make it about cable and strife. You know what cracks me up? Because there's so much like time travel involved oh. in the X Men universe. There is a ton. <laughs> and there's weird time. timelines or whatever. But you know what cracks me up is that like Marvel is would be willing, I think, without a doubt, to have all of these IPs back underneath their their roof. Right. But then they're left with like the cleanup, like. Okay, now we need to salvage X Men. How do we do that? How do we do that exactly? Like, like, do we continue with what they've done and just make it better? Do we make a new origin story? Probably not. Like, right. and that's what they would have to do. Like, if they get Fantastic Four again, do we do another like origin story for Fantastic Four, or do we just like, you know what? They don't need a new origin story. We've had it twice already. We'll just make a Fantastic Four movie, assuming that they're already together. Yeah. Like, how do you do all this? I think they they should do it just assuming they're all together. Like, if it was me, you just, like, something happens, I've got a group of people, call them in. They're there. They yeah. can discuss it a little bit, but they're already a team, they already work well together, they're going in to handle But business. that's much harder to write, I think. True. In general. True. Than an origin story? Um, only because, a number one, the origin story is pretty well laid out. Right. Um, it writes itself, pretty much. Right. It writes itself, pretty much. You just have to, like, put in the right elements. The other thing is that it's harder to write because you're assuming, a, like, you have to assume the right amount of familiarity with these characters, but at the same time, assume that, like, some people are going to be ignorant of right. these characters. And so you have to, like, write it in a way that's accessible to both. Like, and I think that's much harder to write for. So, you know, but they've, I, with Spider Man, we'll see whether or not they can do it. Right. But. Anyway, I think we've been going on for a while. Now. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're almost at an hour and a half. Okay, well, let's go ahead and wrap so, it up then. Maybe yeah. even two. But. Well, thanks for coming out and enjoying our discussion about the Marvel Cinematic Universe, mostly about the new Captain America Liquor Wars. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, if you like it, hit a like button. Check us out at rsgpodcast.com. That'll get you over to both our Stitcher and iTunes links, which you can find at RSG Podcast on those respective sites. Our respective sites and um, yeah have a good day